Hello everybody. Today we try another approach to sculpture. I will show you that we can, I can, and I do, use all kinds of materials to make a sculpture. So it doesn't have to be only clay, oil clay, or water-based clay. It can be all, all kinds of materials which allows you to mold, form, and basically let's call it sculpt. So this particular piece is the Sleeping Raven, which is done out of, I think, two or three pieces of the found objects, which are just a driftwood. So as you can see, this head and the body is a one piece, and it's right here. Let's just look at that. You can see it's up close. See, that's a one piece. And it's very little carving done to pronounce the actual head right here. But majority of it, as you can see, it's a found object. And that's the other side of the piece, which is, this is another piece of the driftwood, which is attached to the, to the sculpture. Okay. And its base is the piece of bamboo with another found piece of the driftwood, which serves part of the base, basically the branch, which it all hangs on. So, as you can see, this is an example. The piece finally exists in bronze too, but I find that original as it is, is absolutely fine and acceptable. So, this is an example of, again, use of the tools which are available and materials which are, in this particular case, found object, found driftwood, like I said, with a very little carving, connecting pieces by drilling them uh, in, and joining them with a bamboo stick and a glue. And it is, it's an old piece, but it's still fine and it's in practically perfect condition. So this is an example of a driftwood. Another piece of the, uh, let's see, this is a piece which is made out of, again, it's made out of driftwood, but this is already cast in bronze. So there's a quite a few pieces of material. So this is one, this is two, three, four, five, five pieces, and the heads are sculpted, and the joint is sculpted. So, but now it's cast in bronze, as you can see. So this is again how it all looks together. One, two, three, the other leg is four, five pieces. This is the view from the back. So it's just extremely rich material. Again, there's a little bit of sculpting done on the bottom and on the front of the sculpture where the legs are. But again, it's uh, this sculpture, sculpted heads. But overall, it's pretty much the material itself, the size, the nature of it, tells me what to do with that and how to approach it. So this is a driftwood. Let's go to, this is an example of a papier-mâché. So the papier-mâché piece is made out of, uh, it's a, it's a papier-mâché, but the binder is more complicated. I don't specifically remember, but when it dries, it hardens and becomes as hard as rock. So it's a paper mixed with all kinds of, um, sorry, mixed with all kinds of um, materials. I don't remember specifics, but it's flour and glue and paper. So as a result, as you can see, it's quite nice, I think. So you can see the, and it's very light. Of course, it's in this particular case, it's more of a fragile piece because these connections are weak along, uh, it's a cardboard inside. So it, you have to be careful with this particular piece, but I find that very interesting and beautiful on its own in material itself because it allows you to do what it does by the nature of the material itself. So this is, let's call it a papier-mâché, only the one which is air hardening. So another example is using all kinds of materials. In this particular case, the boat is made out of wood planks. 
the sculpture of the it's a heron's ride yeah so this uh, sharon's ride so the sharon is made out of paper only and then this flying bird is made as you can see from the foil so again it's a beautiful piece it may it planned to be this is original and it has no other future application as is that's it so it's a final material which of course is hard to digest for any gallery or buyer but that was done for the show in the museum uh, part of the big show so that meant to be as is and I still have them and I find them ex exceedingly beautiful and they have that life of its own because there's transparency um, there's a lightness to it it's, it's just you know it has that life of its own only because of the material which we're using the way they coexist it's I, I still looking at it it's just it's just beautiful so the next one is this is an interesting piece because it's made I made it out of my own sketches so it's a piece of hardwood serves as the floor as a holding base it's a very heavy piece of wood and then everything else is made out of there's a two pieces of wire going through the two legs and everything else is made out of my sketches so I just glue them together and uh, that created the sculpture as you can see it and again it is final this is what it is so there is no and you can see over there there are sketches leftovers you see you can right there and it has kind of a double life and double so it's it brings a different symbolism to the work itself but again it's made from all kinds of this is paper tape so if you have questions because of that how to do that how to use it you can always let me know so another piece uh, which is combination of all kinds of materials as you can see we start with using wooden block this figure made out of paper all together with two wires going all the way through into the horn which on top this cutting this sewing it off guy is made out of different material you'll see that I have a close up on it so it's a piece of solid wood with the guy going into this and then that's the guy who's sewing it off which is made out of foil again it is a final view of the piece this is as it is we all we definitely can mold it and cast it in bronze but it, 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 it i didn't mean it that was it that meant to be final and the last one i want to show you is an example of making sculpture out of wire so this is straightforward wire you're looking at it life size but it was the idea of making sketches for the big outside piece which is fine which is actually executed in wire on a bigger gauge but it all moves as you can see it's all spring loaded so it's designed to move with a very light application of air so this is a head so everything moves but again the tool is it's like a drawing with a wire so this is an example of the nose head this is the bull which again because it's on the spring the legs are free floating the eye is moving so altogether it's a very playful kind of a toy like piece but again the use of the material as it and it was very simply soldered in a simple way doesn't take much effort and time so i just want to introduce you to the possibilities which i find useful and i think they look cool hello my name is simon Cohen. I have been a sculptor longer than I can remember. I have over 13 years of Russian academic training, MFA, and apprenticeship under my dear teacher Isaac Rodsky. I am very excited to share everything I have learned over the years with you in this course. Sculpting is creating a new form of life, not a copy of the existing world. Sculpture is the witness to that experience.
In the first week, you will learn how to see as a sculptor. You will draw, you will walk the line to learn what you see, and you will sculpt what you have learned. In week two, I will introduce the box concept. This is the foundation for your freedom sculpting any figure in any space. This will be the road to understand and to succeed in sculpting not the surface, but the core of new reality. Week 3 will be all about anatomy, but not the anatomy you expect. You will learn about joints, mechanics of the joints, muscles, and their place in space. I will simplify the complex, vast anatomy to a concentrated minimum any sculptor will ever need. I will illustrate it in two and three dimensional form. Week four will be our victory run. You will be taking all the knowledge that you accumulated in these previous weeks and you will sculpt the new world, seen and created by you. Sculpting loose is misunderstood. From now on, you will be sculpting unconstrained, liberated from common standards. Your sculpture will have a new truth and a new reality.